Kevin Martin here, your UT admissions guy. In this workshop, I've recreated and reproduced, with permission, a real UT Austin student application, and I want to walk you through what an admissions reviewer might be thinking as they're reading and trying to assess which admission score to assign this applicant. We'll look at the essays and the resume and discuss the results at the end. I hope you enjoy this video. Hello and welcome to this transfer application workshop where, with permission, I've recreated and reproduced and anonymized a former client's application for spring 2020 transfer into the College of Liberal Arts. And I want to make this video to walk you through what an admissions reviewer is thinking as they are reading and trying to assess and score what personal achievement index score to give this student. So we'll walk through their academics briefly, move on to the resume, look at SAA, Statement of Purpose, and the SAE, Issue of Importance, and I'll share with you some thoughts along the way, and also the likely score that they received on their um, admissions application, and also their outcome. And so for the transfer process, it's important to remember that Nothing from high school is looked at, like your rank, grades, your SAT, ACT. Reviewers are only going to look at and see and assess your um, college coursework and GPA. So of course, they'll first look at the biographical information to look for any signs of hardship, um, but there aren't any that are obvious. They're from a, a middle-income family with, who has bachelor's degree parents. They're a Texas resident, and it looks like they're at um, Austin Community College. Again, applying for nutrition in the College of Liberal Arts. They had more than 24 hours completed before the October 1st deadline. So the GPA that was used for their admission uh, is a 3.875. And so they were they are taking calculus. They did take calculus the, the past fall, um, but admissions reviewers made the decision before the fall semester concluded. Um, for natural sciences, they also strongly recommend that you have calculus completed or in progress. And so that's one reason they did calculus. They had also applied actually for nursing in the previous uh, fall semester for fall 2019, and they did not gain admission. So this is their second transfer application. And it's also important to note that nursing is extraordinarily difficult to gain admission into. They admit maybe one or two external transfer students each year. And so that's, uh, I know in the, in the background, one of the reasons why they ended up applying um, for nutrition instead. Um, the nature of nursing is if you don't get in as a high school senior applying as a freshman, you're probably not going to get in as a transfer, either as a current student or a uh, current UT student or from another university. And let's take a brief look at their courses. So they have um, two of the core sciences with labs. So with that and calculus, they have met the uh, minimum requirements to be eligible for the College of Natural Sciences. They require you to have uh, substantive um, core science coursework. Even though their overall GPA is a 3.87, making a B in one of those core science courses will um, weigh more heavily against their GPA. So that's something that would be noted within UT's um, uh, calculations for them to make their eventual decision. Um, but overall, it's still a really strong, really strong transcript. And we'll take a look at their resume. So transfer admission is a little bit different because resumes between different applicants are going to look considerably different um, than high school seniors, most of whom are, are 17 or 18 years old. Transfers come from a wide variety of backgrounds, and so there's no like typical transfer applicant. And it's also fairly common for transfer students to not have too many activities or even any experiences related to their future studies. And so although the resume is important, it's maybe slightly less important than for first time freshmen. And so the, the bulk of the transfer review process takes place on the essays. Um, nevertheless, we have two part time jobs um, going back for the past four years. One was a teacher's aide and they worked in a um, like a milk breast milk fulfillment center. Uh, in yeah in the Austin area, um, presumably after they moved to enroll at ACC. Um, but in high school, they had a lot of different um, extracurricular activities, leadership. They were captain of the softball team, drum major, vice president, um, in a variety of different leadership positions in their theater and thespian organizations, uh, freshman treasurer. Um, they are Phi Theta Kappa. Um, UT does ask on Applied Texas if you are PTK. I don't exactly know how or if it plays any role in the admissions process because, again, they're principally concerned with your overall GPA and most competitive UT applicants for transfer are also going to be Phi Theta Kappa if they are coming from a community college. Uh, moreover, attending ACC does not help your admissions chances. There's no weight 
or preference given to ACC students. It's simply the case that there's many ACC students who are attempting admission and transfer into UT. So it gives the impression that it, that it's more that it's somehow more important than say Lone Star or Collin College or Dallas Community, but it doesn't really make any difference. It's a common question that um, students and families ask me. And they have a, a well-rounded uh, portfolio of volunteer activities. And so, you know, given that they've been working a part-time job for 20 or 30 hours a week since they moved down to Austin, it's not too surprising that you don't really see any other kind of college or post high school activities, which is totally okay. Again, your admissions reviewer is not going to judge you for the things that you don't do. It just means that the essays are gonna make uh, an even bigger impression and play a larger role in your admissions outcomes. So the SAA Statement of Terp Purpose, admissions reviewers want to know the context of your academic development and growth. They want to know where you've come from in terms of high school briefly, uh, why you've decided to enroll at your current university, any special circumstances along the way, like if you've withdrawn or you've attended multiple campuses or universities. And so there's a, a lot of different kind of specific questions that uh, applicants need to check off. It's a, a little more closed and less open-ended than the SAA freshman topic about telling us your story. Um, so this is a, a fairly textbook statement of purpose. I think it's an excellent example of uh, checking a bunch of these boxes and sharing um, kind of their development and trajectory over time. I like the very first sentence, I enrolled at Austin Community College on my parents' advice. Um, they encouraged me to finish my general studies before pursuing my nursing degree. Um, they talk about how nursing didn't uh, work out for them and you know, I think I, I see this so often with students who are transferring is in retrospect, they will talk about kind of wishing that they had done CAP in order to guarantee a pathway into their dream school. They get turned off because CAP only guarantees admission into liberal arts, but internally transferring into natural sciences is a fairly straightforward process. And so they've kind of taken a roundabout journey to, um, you know, in their in their academic career. But again, that's very common for transfers to sort of, um, you know, change directions a few times before they end up, you know, finishing their bachelor's degree. They talked about some of the stresses and um, anxieties that come and like understandably upset whenever all of their friends are moving away from home uh, and they feel like they're kind of missing out on, uh, you know, the four year university experience. And it's good for to just be authentic and sincere and talk about those feelings and, and your kind of decision making both in the moment when you're trying to decide how to enroll and how your beliefs and expectations have changed over time. And they're sharing just some general observations about family gatherings. Uh, and that's kind of as a pretext to establish their dad who got uh, diagnosed with stage four cancer whenever they were in elementary school. And this will play a larger role in their SAE, their issue of importance. And so just kind of flag this as setting up the foundation for what they'll eventually discuss in their next essay. And then they conclude with a, um, a pretty thoughtful conversation about why they want to study nutrition and some... Uh, you know, various resources, courses, opportunities at UT Austin that they're interested in pursuing. Um, they've even looked, so nutrition has a couple different streams and paths that one can take. And so dietetics is a one option that they can take. So by um, citing some of these why UT statements, you are demonstrating to your reviewer that you've done some research, you've found some resources that are um, you know, specific to your ambitions and goals and interests. And you're not just applying to UT because it's, you know, a great university or it's in the city of Austin, which is a cool place. But it's really important, especially if you're a transfer, to have really clear and well-defined goals of how UT can help you achieve your, um, you know, long-term interests and ambitions. And so that's certainly something that plays a larger role in the transfer process that, you know, demonstrating why you're applying is, is more important than it is for first-time freshman admission. Um, it's also a good idea they've done here to, you know, just, you know, express thanks and gratitude. I know going to community college isn't always, you know, people's uh, first choice, uh, you know, following their senior year of high school, but there's obviously, you know, often a lot of good that can come from it. You know, they've saved some money, they've become more responsible with money, uh, they've, you know, become a little more independent. And overall, it's just a very thoughtful SAA that, again, checks a lot of the boxes and I think is quite a, a textbook example of a, of a solid response. And so it does everything that they need it to. Um, it's not too flashy. There's not a lot of flair. Um, essays, they don't have to be kind of storytelling or unconventional or experimental. Um, but again, just a thoughtful, sincere, mature essay that will certainly impress the reviewers. So let's look at the SAE that uh, requires students to discuss an issue of importance. Um, this issue can be something individual in their family life, their community, school, 
uh, city, state, um, national, international problems. So it's quite a broad topic. And uh, they've decided to um, talk about, you know, go more in depth about their uh, father's cancer diagnosis and chemotherapy and treatments and how it was, you know, it was quite tough and kind of how life had changed before and after. Just as a little backstory, when the student originally sent their first draft, they thought that it was going to be an SAC, Special Circumstances. And throughout the drafting process, we pivoted more towards the SAE. First of all, because there wasn't enough here to, to make for a Special Circumstances SAC. That essay is more for something that has directly impacted you and had kind of significant uh, consequences for your academic opportunities. Perhaps you had to take a lot of time off from school. Your grades have um, suffered, for example. Um, I think, you know, for example, if you yourself lived with cancer, then that would almost certainly be a, a special circumstances SAC. Also, since this happened in elementary school, it, it you know, it's just kind of a little too far in the, the past to make kind of an explicit um, provision for, hey, like I need to, you know, talk about more that it wasn't already mentioned in SAA. Um, sometimes students that might have a par paragraph or two of a special circumstance, like they've withdrawn for a semester or they had to, to um, like drop a few classes middle of the semester. So if you want to, if you do have special circumstances, maybe try and fit those into SAA, um, unless it's something really significant and serious um, that you need an entire essay for. Oftentimes you can work that into an SAE and develop it a little more thoroughly. Um, so, of course, she talks about kind of the trials and tribulations of how she and her family and her father were able to, um, yeah, kind of how, how he overcame. But then as well, um, her uh, her dad's father or her dad's mother um, also was diagnosed with uh, liver cancer and, and eventually took her life. And so this is something that's, that's clearly personal to the family beyond just their, their father. And it's obviously something that might run in the family, perhaps, if, um, you know... Yeah, if she ends up getting sick as well. And it's interesting that um, after uh, the dad and the grandma's diagnosis, here's where they start to talk about their fit for their major in terms of nutrition, how their mom started to kind of go on a, a diet craze and um, kind of regulate some of their eating habits and the food that was coming into the house. Um, if the cancer wasn't genetic, she reasoned it must be environmental or due to the diet. Understandably so. She didn't want me or my brother to receive an early cancer diagnosis. Um, I hated giving up Doritos, but I grew accustomed to eating spinach and leafy greens and substitute for grain and processed food. So they talk about some of their own eating habits and, and dietary habits that they ended up changing and reforming. Um, and how even when they've moved away from home that they're eating at home, which gives us new, more nutritious, saves some money, um, cutting out you know, processed and high sugar foods. Maintaining an active lifestyle also matters. I played team sports for most of my life. Um, running together with my dad, who also says he feels lucky to be alive, pushes me to go the extra mile. Uh, we run local lit races in 5Ks. And so again, it's almost like an extension of the SAA. It has a little bit of an element of describe the environment in which you were raised, which was the former SAA topic for first time freshmen. Um, but again, it's just a really kind of solid example that talks about a, a personal uh, event and tragedy within their lives. and. They've also done a really important thing by identifying kind of a before, a during, and an after. And the after, where they talk about the reforming of diet and nutrition habits, that is what really establishes their um, interest in their first choice major. And so that's, um, you know, sufficient to communicate to reviewers that, you know, they've considered thoughtful reasons for why they have, you know, decided for nutrition as opposed to, say, biology or any other major within the College of Natural Sciences. Um, so you're also welcome to pause this if you want to read the essay a little more closely. I've also recreated this as a blog post on my website, uh, techsubmissions.com, so you can um, view it a little more in detail there. It's so like I've already said, they have a you know a really solid application. Um, I mentioned that earning the B in one of those core science courses will definitely take their GPA down a little bit because uh, admissions reviewers will look independently at a STEM GPA um, versus the overall GPA if they are applying for natural sciences or engineering. Uh, I talked about how it's not necessary to have, uh, you know, kind of relevant experience on the resume that fits to your first choice major, but they demonstrated a lot of leadership and a commitment to service. They were involved in a variety of different activities in um, at their high school. And, you know, I think they do enough work in the SAA and SAE talking about how, uh, you know, walking through the reviewer, the steps of how they achieve their uh, you know, future, how they achieve their current goals and have made the most of their resources at, at uh, Austin Community College. Um, I think it's, uh, I think this is a pretty solid four. 
Uh, I think if there's 100 reviewers that are reading this, maybe two thirds of them would see it as a four. I think there might be some that would be particularly moved by the um, story in SAE and, and assign them a five. Uh, I think the likely score is probably a 4.5. Um, they were admitted for spring 2020 to the College of Natural Sciences. Uh, the average admitted GPA for natural sciences is around a 3.8 or 3.85. And so they probably were, this probably was like kind of on, on the border. It's hard to say if they would have gained admission for fall 2020, which is uh, generally more competitive than for spring. Um, but I think it's great that, that it ended up working out for the student. And I hope that um, you've learned a little bit about how admissions reviewers are reading and scoring these uh, UT Austin external transfer applications. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find more helpful information at texadmissions.com slash blog. And in the information section of this video, I provide links to a free online email consultation if you're interested in potentially working together, and links to my book, Your Ticket to the 40 Acres, and my premium course, Getting Into Texas Universities. Thanks, and I hope to see you again soon.